What's going on, everybody? The first edition of the National Football League version of the Bears Bets podcast, the NFL, uh, underway Thursday night with Chiefs Lions, and obviously this Sunday, the first full day of National Football League action. I am excited to get going talking about it, and I am excited to talk about it with Jeff Schwartz, who obviously played in the league for quite some time and is a big NFL fan, and looking forward to getting your analysis on the plays on the field, what goes on behind the scenes. So, Jeff, talk to me about your excitement level for the NFL getting going. So I love college football. Like, it's a passion of mine. But the NFL tops everything. I love the NFL. I love watching it. I love analyzing it. I don't always love wagering <laughs> on it because it is so sick and difficult to win the NFL. There's no edges. Games are always close. Um, and there's always just weird motivations each week and whatnot. But, Bear, I'm excited to be here talking through each and every week with you. Yeah, I, I think the, the biggest thing that I've come to learn – with NFL betting is you have to be willing to gulp and swallow hard and take some gross looking sides and teams, because that seems to be the only way I can find an edge betting on teams that normally you wouldn't want to bet on. Cause look, most of these, all these teams are super <laughs> talented, but you, the last thing you want to do, you, you don't want to be laying a touchdown on the road in a divisional game or Oof. at all. And like is it attractive to gross home dogs, lines that might be a little bit fishy. Why is this line only two and a half? Other side is probably the right side. Yes, and that is is the toughest part, guys. And you know, these are, again, real wagers that we are making on this show as we continue to reiterate that. These are things we are actually doing. And that's the hardest part, right? Because you're wagering on teams most often that stink that are getting yes. points at home. And unlike college football, when some of those games can be fun, exciting, lots of points scored, a lot of them are just freaking grinds, dude. Like, they're just, they're miserable. You're like, you're, please hold on and cover this game. And so, uh, but it makes the NFL gambling fun because it feels more rewarding when you win those wagers. Now, it, 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 it does. And uh, being a part of contests where you need to pick five or seven of these games a week, <laughs> it's uh, it's certainly a challenge some weeks when you, you, you get past, like, okay, this game I like, this game I like, this game, yeah, I kind of like. When did you get down? Oh, God, I need two more. It's like, <laughs> mm, yeah, let me look at the Colts plus six, I guess, kind of. Yeah, just kind of. Um, anything in the preseason happened that changed your mind about any of these teams heading into week one or any sort of future wager that you had? Again, the preseason is very, very kind of, it, it used to be ones versus ones bear and twos versus twos, and you kind of had a rhythm. Now with three games, man, teams are playing ones versus twos, twos versus ones, ones versus threes. I feel like you can't really get a good rhythm and understand what's happening in the preseason now. That's the thing that I take away from the preseason and try and spin it forward. Are these teams that the starters don't necessarily play either at all in the preseason or certainly in the third game or maybe even after the first game. Like, I think it takes a little bit of time. I don't, again, you would know better yeah. than I do, but I don't think necessarily you can get into a rhythm and get ready to go right into it week one just in practice. I think you need to partake in those, in those preseason games to kind of reacclimate yourself yeah. to, to live, full action football. I don't think you need so, like, Teams that maybe rested all their starters for the entire post uh, for the entire preseason or haven't played in a while, those are teams I might be looking to go against early in the year. It's worked one time, Sean McVay, right? Not playing starters in the preseason, but for the most part, a lot of winning coaches, Andy Reid's, the Mike Tomlins, the Bill Belichick's, they play their starters a lot in the preseason, and it's no wonder that that they start fast. Pittsburgh to me is a team that I don't want to overreact to preseason because a lot of times they were playing ones versus twos, mm -hmm. but man, they look good, dude. And they get T.J. Watt back on defense. Like, Kenny Pickett looks to take the next step this year. Offensive line looks, again, it's it's ones versus twos. But I, I bring this up a lot, is that if you're on the first unit, you should dominate the twos. Like, that to me is a positive yes. when you play well against someone that you should really beat up. So, for me, Pittsburgh is a team where I like them heading this season and maybe I'm overreacting a tiny bit to what, to what I saw. But they're a team that, that caught my attention. You know, on the flip side, that like, Buffalo played their ones against Pittsburgh and didn't look good. Didn't look good at all. And and so, I wonder if that if, if I discount a team because of that. And some of the 49ers, the 49ers, ones times, mainly the offensive line, didn't look great. Nick Bosa didn't play the entire preseason. So, that might be another one of the flip sides, one of those teams that obviously 
ironically, they're, yeah. they're playing Pittsburgh week one. Yeah, and uh, we'll get to that game in a little bit. But let's get to your first bear bet for the National Football League. It is the Green Bay Packers at the Chicago Bears, a divisional game here. The Bears are favored by one. The total is 42. Aaron Rodgers out. Jordan Love in for the Packers. The Bears have added talent. And I hope Justin Fields takes the next step in his progression this year. Bear, where are you leaning yeah. first? Way, yeah, obviously, we're, at the time we're recording this, I have to go with the line at what it is. Bears minus one. I like the Bears here. Uh, for you at home, I might wait. I don't think this is going to go to one and a half or two. So I would just wait it out as long as you can. Maybe you get a pick. Maybe Green Bay actually goes uh, to a one point favorite. Like, I am like, Jordan Love could succeed. He may not. But I just think this is a Green Bay team that is in a, in a in roster transition. They're one of the youngest teams in the league. And it just. They're, they're, they are like the biggest trend. Oh, I think the Packers are going to surprise this year. Everyone's saying that. It's to a point where the Packers are no longer a surprise. And look, I am not one of these Justin Fields is going to be an MVP yeah. in this league or be this dramatically improved passer. But his ability to run and improvise, I think that's going to give defenses problems early on. As bad as the Bears were last year, they were in some games. They beat the 49ers week one. I think I basically to just to essentially win the game yeah. at home against Green Bay, I, 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 I like the Bears here. I think it's fair to, defense can't help but be better no. than last year either. I, I think it's fair to point out, too, some of these wages you're going to make throughout the season are, are not – uh, you know, a plus for the Bears, but more of a fade of the Packers mm -hmm. in the situation. Jordan Love really interests me because it's his fourth season now. And a lot of times you hear early in, in quarterbacks' careers behind the scenes, like with Patrick Mahomes, I'm not comparing him to Patrick Mahomes, but the idea was like, oh, he looks good in practice. Like you see, like there's yeah. there's there's things you see where you're like, oh man, I can't wait for him to play. I know Rodgers won two MVPs there in the last three years, and so there was no need to get him on the field, but we haven't heard that with Jordan Love. We haven't heard oh my God, man, I can't wait until he plays. He's going to show everyone. And so I think it's a good spot to take a division opponent. Do you, do you buy into the idea that week one divisional dogs is a good wager? I don't necessarily know if that's a so, something that I pay my, is, is an actionable trend. I mean, obviously it's a, it's a, it's a massive deal that you're starting with a divisional opponent. And I don't think it, it I don't think divisional, it really matters in terms of dog favorite, but the fact that you are playing a divisional game, I, I think it's a big deal and you know, you're going to get both teams best efforts. But at the same time with love, there are also people out there who kind of like the idea that he's been on the team for three, four years now, has held the clipboard, watched it observed, <laughs> and hasn't because something because now you're taking a quarterback high in the draft, Anthony Richardson, CJ Stroud, pricing, all these guys are starting we're playing right away. Right out of the gate. And is there something be, to be said that maybe love will benefit the fact that he's kind of got to observe one of the greatest ever to do it and not have it to play? <sighs> Maybe. I mean, people are doing the parallel to Rogers, right? Who sat behind yeah. Hall of Famer Brett Favre. I, I think my thing is one of the reasons Rogers was so aggressive, not this season, but the last off season of kind of holding the Packers to the fires. He knew that Jordan Love wasn't the guy they could just be like, all right, Rogers, see you later. We'll start love. Yeah. Like, I feel like that's part of the, of that Good equation point. from, from last year, not obviously this off season. And so I think that there's just not that thought. There's a thought of, okay, maybe he can do it. Maybe he can be good. But you mentioned all, all the young quarterbacks. Now, with quarterbacks through high school and college, they're just more prepared. And so a lot of them come into the NFL ready to play now. Doesn't always happen. Trey Lance wasn't ready to play now. No. Jordan Love wasn't ready to play now, obviously. Now, he was behind Aaron Rodgers. So, I look, I'm, I think he can do it, like be competent, be good. But week one, a lot of pressure on him. Everyone's watching him, and the Bears are much improved. Let's get to our second Bear bet. Another divisional game, the Bengals at the Browns here. The Browns are plus two and a half. Totals 48.5. Joe Burrow is back in practice for the Bengals, going to play this week. Um, and the Browns guys had a good football team. Deshaun Watson with a full offseason. Where are you leaning here, Bear? I like the Browns a lot this year. I'm taking the Browns plus a two and a half in this game. You mentioned Joe Burrow. How mobile is he going to be behind a bad offensive line? A calf injury, I think, can be an issue throughout the year. It's something that I think can just pop up on the spur of the moment. You mentioned Deshaun Watson. Like Your opinion of the Browns basically comes down to, do you think Deshaun Watson can still play quarterback in the National Football League? If you think he can, then you're going to be bullish on the Browns because their roster is really, their roster, roster is probably better than the Bengals top to bottom. They got some great receivers, obviously Chubb at running back. Uh, defensively, 
The, the front is outstanding, and now you bring in Jim Schwartz to be the defensive coordinator. As bad as things were in Cleveland last year, they absolutely kicked the crap out of the <laughs> Bengals' Halloween weekend last year. Yeah. So I, I think the way the, Bang, the Browns' schedule shapes up later in the year, I know I'm kind of getting off of this one particular game and getting excited about betting the Browns uh, in, in, in some future wagers as well, but I, I think this is a great situation for, for Cleveland. And look, they are a two and a half point favorite. And the fact that everybody loves Cincinnati and Joe Burrow is back, the line is staying south of a field goal, yeah. which leads me to believe the odds makers are quite comfortable going into this game with the liability needing 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 the home dog, needing the Browns, comfortable saying, okay, we'll let we'll let everybody have have Cincinnati at a little bit of a discount less than a field goal. And they're attracting that money. And I, I think I think the, the odds makers are telling you that Cleveland's the right side. I think so too. Um, the Browns um, are just a good football team. If Watson can be a little bit above average, like he was in Houston, I don't think people think Watson is going to be maybe the superstar that he was a couple of years ago or was on path to 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 be that way. The one problem I have about betting against the Bengals is, as a Chiefs fan, I've come to really respect them. Right, yeah. like they play Hard a style of football that is that is that, that plays each week. They don't make mistakes. They don't turn the ball over, and they play a, a solid defense. It doesn't allow a lot of explosive plays, and so I do worry about that. How when much? You, how many? You talking about the defense and the uh, change in the safeties and the secondary? How much will that affect the Everett's defense? I, I mean, they they drafted Dax Hill last year, right? So like they're adding him into the into the defense, obviously, kind of more prominent role. It will probably affect some of it early on, um, but you know they 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 just they kind of corral offenses. Like when you watch the Bengals defense play, they don't allow explosive plays. Like, but I do worry about their ability to stop the Browns rushing attack, which is really good. And if the Browns rushing attack works as well as it should, that allows Deshaun Watson to get some more open opportunities uh, to, to hit guys, obviously in, in different spaces of defense. I, I will always lean toward divisional dogs getting points in the situation. But my only counter again is that I just respect the Bengals a lot and the way they do things. Burrow's mobility to your point will be tested against miles Garrett and the Browns pass rush it's a good opportunity here for Orlando Brown who got paid a lot of money to to be the guy that they need him to be early in week one against Miles Garrett because Miles Garrett buddy is oh, yeah. a beast and um he he's one of those guys that, that will be up for defensive player of the year over sack total all those things let's get to your third bear bet of the week three out of four here another divisional game no it's a trend here guys another divisional <laughs> game the Jaguars at the Colts, the Colts are getting five points. Their total is 45 and a half at time of recording. Jacksonville is looking to build on their AFC South title last season and a playoff victory. We know comeback win over the Chargers. The Colts starting anew with Anthony Richardson. Bear, where are you going here? Well, I, I mentioned a little while ago off the top in the NFL, you need to bet on bad teams. So I am, <laughs> I count me in on the Colts getting five. Look, the Colts. They don't know they stink right now. They, they hope, hope is eternal. Anthony Richardson, we're going to start him, send him out there, see what he can do. And, and maybe his mobility will give uh, Jacksonville's defense, which, which I think Jacksonville's defense has some problems. Uh, I think maybe Richardson will have some success uh, kind of improvising and creating there. He's obviously he's got a huge arm, you know, Jonathan Taylor. So we'll see how that ultimately affects their offense. But like I said, Remember, last year, Jacksonville started off slow yeah. and, and kind of built up by the end of the year that uh, they were a playoff team. But but I think here, no Cam Robinson in the offensive line for Jacksonville against a Colts defense. They, yeah. they're, they're not terrible. I, I think they could give uh, Jacksonville some problems here. Look, I was not expecting to be sitting here week one <laughs> wanting to bet the Colts or betting the Colts. Yeah. but. I did bet the Colts that I'm taking the five and you might, and you might, again, this might be another one uh, like the bears game. The other, the other, one of the other divisional games that we talked about, like this, this isn't, I don't think this is going to go to four and a half or so. I think this is only going to go five and a half or six. I'm curious where this moves, but this to me feels like a wager solely in Anthony Richardson, right? The, oh God, the, I hope not because I, I, mean, I don't think he's the, ready at all. The, but here's the thing: the, Shane Steichen's their their head coach came over from Philly and was with Justin Herbert, as a young player, quarterback coach in in uh, in Los Angeles. He said, and they have said, we are designing an offense that's RPO based, right? That run pass option that, that uses the athletic ability and the big arm of of Richardson. They have said, hey, I mean, if, if he goes ten for twenty one but rushes for hundred yards, we're okay with that. Just limit the turnovers. In week one, you have an advantage because Jacksonville doesn't know what you're going to do mm -hmm. with the RPO game. So I think there's ways for the Colts to get offense by just, not fooling is the wrong word. 
but just not Jacksonville not knowing the looks they're going to give. And so that gives, I think, the Colts an advantage in this game. Do you buy into the idea that the Colts cannot win opening weekend and it's now over a couple no. coaching staffs? No, I, I think that's it. just one of those like circumstantial things, like it just based on how individual games have gone, who they played, where they played. I'm not. I'm, I'm as someone who's backing the Colts here. I'm hoping people do buy into <laughs> that. That way, I might be able to jump back in and maybe get a little bit of number on the Colts. Do you ever buy trends like like that in general, or you just stay away from those? Like that? No, no. That that's not something that I will. I mean, that that is a completely random thing that has nothing to do with with with. with and in, in my opinion, like I I will buy into certain deals with. Against certain coaches yeah. or, or certain teams, or if you want to say in divisional road game, something yeah. like that, I, th- I think you can you can buy into believe because the, the the team may change, but the circumstance may stay. But but I think in a one game opening weekend, I, I think that's totally just random and just an anomaly. Well, we're going four for four here with Bears bets with divisional. Dogs, the Bills at the Jets. The Jets are getting two and a half points here. The total is 46 and a half. Not much to explain here. Buffalo, we know how good they've been over the last couple of years. And your New York Jets have Aaron Rodgers and a very talented football team. And their offensive line looks to be fixed, which was a problem in the preseason. Bear, Monday Night Football, what are we doing here? I'm taking the Jets plus the two and a half, and I'll probably have the Jets on the money line as well. Um, look, they beat the Bills. They split with the Bills last year and nearly end. That was getting quarterback play from Zach Wilson and Mike White. <laughs> Uh, both games that last year, Josh Allen struggled. I don't think they scored. I think they scored 20 in one game. And I think the other game was 12. Maybe it was, was it 20 to 12. Maybe it was the other game. I forget. But, but regardless of the scores, the Jets defense did a really good job uh, against Allen. And like I said, the quarterback upgrade from White and Wilson to Aaron Rodgers is one of the biggest like single season quarterback upgrades you could ever make it. It's a massive game for the Jets. And, and again, I didn't, which we talked about the, do you bet the divisional dog because it on a just just because but if you look at the jet schedule the games they have coming up this is one of the more winnable games that they have early in the year basically a toss up game at home uh, monday night i i thought i'd hear a lot more talk about the jets being a live dog here but i really have not i i've actually heard more doubt about the jets than i have people buying in but it's clear that Rodgers and Garrett Wilson have a rapport. Yeah. It's clear it looks like the offensive line now, now will be is a little bit better uh, defensively. I, I think they're only going to be uh, they'll they'll be at least as good as they were last year. And uh, I am I am uh, worriedly high on the jo- <laughs> on the Jets this year because I am setting myself up for disappointment and failure. Like again, the number being less than a field goal yeah. tells me that the odds makers are fine with Bill's money. So I will take the uh, the two and a half point here, dog with the Jets, and I have taken it already, and I will uh, I'll probably take the Jets on the money line as well. I have no feel in this game. I'm just going to watch it and be happy to see uh, a new look Jets team. Buffalo's I just they've been backsliding, right? Defense yeah, hasn't been good. The thing, Offensive the, you, line you, issue. You hear about the is the window closing yeah. for both with the dig situation? I don't know, man. I don't know. Let's uh, recap your five ways. Excuse me, your four wagers here. Uh, they are all divisional dogs. Uh, we have the Chicago. No, excuse me, divisional favorite here. Chicago Bears favored by Hopefully one over the dog Packers. By kickoff. I, I don't think it's going to go that direction though. I don't think so? No, I don't think so. Uh, Browns getting two and a half points host the Bengals, the Colts plus five, starting Anthony Richardson here against Jacksonville, and the Jets on Monday Night Football plus two and a half. Those are your, your four bear bets. You mentioned a game that you you have no idea what's going to happen, Bills, Jets. The game that I want no part of and I have no idea what's going to happen involves the other New York team, uh, the, the Giants and the Cowboys. Like Everything in the world tells me that the Giants are totally going to regress from l- last year where they won some games that they probably shouldn't have, uh, won a playoff game before they got absolutely blown out by Philly. Um but at the same time, are we willing to lay points on the road with Dak Prescott, <laughs> Mike McCarthy, and and Brian Schottenheimer? Look, I like Dallas a lot this year. I think uh, I have a Dallas bet on the Cowboys to win the division. Um, I, I think Pollard's going to have a huge year, and obviously defensively they're great. But 
Do do we do we want to lay north of a field goal right off the bat against the Giants? <laughs> no <laughs> chance. This is the stinkiest game for me of the week, among some others like the Washington game in Minnesota. Um, you mentioned all the reasons why I think you can be skeptical about the Giants this season, but also the Cowboys. Like you're going on the road, Sunday Night Football. You don't have to wager on every primetime game, everybody. I, Correct. I know you took the Monday Night Football game, but like this is a stinky line, man. Three and a half here. Um, they're they're begging you to take the Giants, right? They're begging you to take them because all the money's on the Cowboys, but the Giants historically have not covered great at MetLife Stadium as well. Uh, that place, and I played there for, for two years, is not a raucous home atmosphere. You're going to have a lot of Cowboys fans there. And again, the Giants, to me, like Daniel Jones, is he the next step up? Is he making that step up this season against a Cowboys team? And I'm with you on the general idea of the Cowboys. They, they are good. They have a good football team. But they're so untrustworthy, dude. Yes, like, like you, you just can't trust them each and every year. I want to pick them. Look, there's not been a repeat winner in the NFC East since 2004. 2004. 20 years. 20 years. 20 years. And by the way, there's been three Super Bowl champions in that time as well, right? Like the Giants have won twice. The Eagles have won as well. And they're they're just they're, – they're is, it's a tough division each and every year to win. And the, the Giants are – I mean, excuse me, the, the Cowboys are a logical choice here. But in week one, heck no. Staying away from that one. No, and, and you, we talked about – hating betting in the NFL and how it's hard to win. One of the things that I, I always find is, a, is one of the bigger edges you have as a player is they have to board every game and put numbers up at every game. You don't have to bet every game. <laughs> so if we're, if we're telling you there's a game we don't like, that's probably the best advice that, that we can give you. And speaking of advice, we've got some other guys to bring in to talk about it, and that's our buddies over in the gambling group chat, which we're going to get to. All right, time for the gambling group chat, NFL style. Excited. To, we've knocked a couple of these out now for college already, and there's been a lot of fun and a lot of information kicked around. The NFL starts this week. We'll actually start at Thursday night with the Chiefs Lions game. And we are once again joined by Chef Schwartz, who's here in studio, Sam Panianovich, and Will Hill. Uh, before we get into like week one game specifics and what we like week one, Futures have been out there a long time. We've kicked around futures all off season in appearances and stuff that we've done all all around there. You got one future with anything, win total, player prop, award, uh, one one or one or two things out there that still might be available that you guys like, Sammy. Well, I have more than one, so I'm going to whittle down my list here on the fly. Perfect. Um, Keep going as many as, many as you want. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah. Well, let me let me lay down like a therapy session and give you all my bets. Uh, I did bet <laughs> Herbert at 15 to 1 MVP. I thought that number was too high. It's it's gone, unfortunately. But here's a number you can still find. I was actually breezing through one of my outs the other day, and it was kind of like I was at the grocery store. Do I really need cocoa puffs? No. But Tyree Kill was 150 to but 1. I would like to cocoa MVP. puffs. I love cocoa puffs. I don't need cocoa puffs, and I don't need to bet Tyree You're Kill at 150 for cocoa to 1. puffs. <laughs> so I did put a little Tyreek in my pocket. Look, if he gets 1,900 receiving yards and 12 touchdowns and Miami finishes first in the East, it could happen. That's a lot of ifs there. But I do like Herbert and Hill. Hill, obviously, a long shot. And then I bet Ravens over 10 and a half wins plus money and Ravens to win the North at five to two. Yeah, look, as far as, you know, who's going to win the Super Bowl, that's a long way away. February's a long way away. I don't have a crystal ball. I have no idea who's going to win. All I know is the Jets play the Cowboys in week two, and they're going to have a rematch in the Super Bowl. 89 to one, the Jets versus the Cowboys. <laughs> Jets almost made the playoffs with the worst quarterback on God's green earth last year in Wilson. I, I just don't buy the idea that Rogers is shot and co I think the I, I think the Cowboys look, nobody wants to pick them because you always get burned picking the Cowboys, but I think they're I dead like even with Philly. And look, Philly had a really soft schedule last year. It's much harder this year. Starting in November, Philly has five games, uh, two against Dallas, the 49ers, at the Chiefs, and then the Bills on short rest. So uh, it might come down to this in the East. The Cowboys don't have to play the Chiefs. Philly has to play in Kansas City. Uh, if you win the division, obviously, you're in much better shape. Jets, Cowboys, and the Super Bowl, I have no idea who's going to win, though. I'm not, I'll, you know what? I'll, I'll make Bear happy. Jets by a field goal in the Super Bowl, but 89-1 is a good place. I, I, I have lived the misery forever. John Hall, the, the mud bowl in Miami. Uh, Vinny Testaverde, Steelers, ACL. Just, yeah, t t that, it was the, I can remember driving to, to the Meadowlands that, that day, being in the car, listening to Mike Francesa, talking about the coach, and this is the year, the coach, they're going to win the Super Bowl. And then first quarter, I think it was first quarter, 
or not, it was early second quarter, Testaverde, Achilles done, season over, and I, I literally left the game early. I was so dejected. I was like, this is why you're, you're, you're a Jets, but I, I'm, I'm with you, brother, man. Like, I normally am like the most pessimistic person when it comes to the Jets, and uh, they're going to stink. They'll find a way to screw it up. I am too excited about this year, which probably means it's going to end very badly, but I, I, li- I like both of those calls by like I like Dallas like their defense is going to be really good now at the same time you want to back a team with Mike McCarthy and Brian Schottenheimer on the offensive side of the ball that that's the thing that could probably come back and bite you but yeah I, I I'm not high as on, on the Eagles this year as a lot of people are so I, I think San Francisco is the best team in the NFC, the best roster in the NFC. We'll see if Purdy can repeat. Bose is in there now, um, and, and we'll see if the offensive line plays out. Yeah, the, the couple of uh, futures that I, I play putting Johnson at, uh, to win Rookie of the Year, Offensive Rookie of the Year, got to be like twenty to one. I don't know what the price is now, and, and I played the Browns season win total over nine and a half. I got plus plus one fifteen on that, so I am high on the Browns. I think they get some really fortunate scheduling as well. Uh, Biggest improvement in the offseason uh, in terms of coordinators, uh, Jim Schwartz coming in to coach a defense. I, I think as long as Deshaun Watson is not washed, I, I think the Browns have a really good roster and a really good chance to uh, – to, to, to compete in that division. I you know Sammy likes the Ravens. I, I think it's more of a, is it maybe more of an anti Bengals feel or is it just confident in the Ravens? Cause it, it's a little bit of both of I me. Mean, I'm confident in the Browns, but I think, I think the Bengals are going to take a, take a little bit of a step back as well. Yeah. And I think Jeff can maybe tee this one up too. I mean, the worst part about the Bengals team is the offensive line. That's, that's clear to me at least. And New we've Saints already seen too. For sure. But I mean, on the offensive side of the ball, their line is very weak. They have playmakers. Obviously, we know about Jamar Chase and P. Higgins. But when the quarterback's limping around already in August with a line that's basically patched together, that's not good big picture. I like their talent, but I don't like their protection. Brutal schedule for the Bengals, well, too. They have to play the Bills, the Chiefs, the 49ers, all those teams. None of those teams are easy in terms of the Steelers, the Ravens, the Browns. I mean, that's eight, nine tough games right off the bat there. I mean, uh, just as an aside to enhance your point, Sammy, like under 11, under 11 and a half wins for Cincy, it's very hard with that schedule with a limp, to, you know, a quarterback limping around to get to 12 wins. I, I like under for Cincy as well. If we're saying the AFC guys, Jacksonville over nine and a half is my favorite win total of the year. It's, it's pretty juiced now. But when we look at the schedules, we have to look at quarterbacks teams are playing, right? It, it's, it's a good way to judge wins and losses. So, the, so Jacksonville has the Colts twice, the Titans twice, um, and they have the Texans twice, okay? So that's, that's rookie quarterbacks for four of those six games, maybe five of those six games, six of those six games, and the NFC South. So they have a Baker Mayfield, a Ritter, a Young, and a Derek Carr with maybe a, a baddish offense in New Orleans. Those are all games they're probably going to win. If they, even they don't, they win eight of those games, and then they have to win two more. Like, to me, Jacksonville over nine and a half is my favorite one of the year. My favorite prop of the year, by the way, it's kind of fun on the radar. I feel like George Pickens at, 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 at Pittsburgh, his his touchdown number was four and a half. He had four last season. He's going to get 10 to 12 touchdowns this season. I, I do not understand why the number was set so low. Uh, I even threw some money to him to, to lead the NFL in receiving. I think Pittsburgh this year and Kenny Pickett play really well and, and kind of get back to their winning ways, especially as a, as a playoff team. But to me, Pickett's over four and a half, hands down my favorite future prop, whatever you want to call it, um, of the NFL offseason. Get, get back to their winning ways. I mean, don't, don't you know that – Mike Tomlin has never had a losing season as Pittsburgh Steelers head coach. Haven't you heard that anywhere before? They weren't a playoff team last season. I think they get back to the playoffs this season. And they almost were. Things almost worked out for them the last week of the year for them to get into the playoffs. It was incredible. You mentioned Jacksonville. This is a scary game week one. Like, I was ready to be uh, like – Look, I am not the biggest Anthony Richards, Richardson fan in the world. There's no Jonathan Taylor. But I absolutely know come Sunday – I'm going to have that Colts plus five ticket in my hand because I, I, I am a Massachusetts and I can't help but play bad sides and bad teams. No Cam Robinson on the offensive line. I have a little bit of concern about Jacksonville's defense. I think maybe Richardson first started just, just enough to kind of run around, keep them in there. It's a Colts team that was in some games last year, probably shouldn't have been, despite how bad they were last year. It would not surprise me to look up in the fourth quarter and see this. 24-20 Jacksonville. Colts have the ball late with a chance. 
Yeah, and I think Steichen, I mean, when you go from Jeff Saturday to Steichen, I think you're just going to be so much more imaginative on offense. Uh, remember now, Thank Steichen you. comes from Philly. A lot of RPOs. Yeah, exactly. A lot of RPOs, a lot of play action. And every third and one, fourth and one with that big quarterback, they're going to do that, The uh, you know, the rugby scrum. And, and look, when you can extend drives on 31, fourth and one and keep the ball instead of punting, that's a very subtle but very important advantage in these games. Um, I, I'm not a huge trend guy, but division dogs, especially home division dogs in week one has been a very profitable one. One, I would only look to the Colts. I think, you know, look, I, I do think the Jags probably win that division by two plus games, like Jeff is saying, but I think people forget like last year, how they won that division. I mean, they were trailing Josh Dobbs at home. They needed a strip sack, you know, touchdown to win that game. <laughs> Tennessee completely fell apart. Uh, I just think people are forgetting a little bit their path, like where it sort of fell into their lap a little bit last year. Speaking of ugly sides, the sharpest guy that I know, his favorite bet week one, he took the pass. He took five. And he took four and a half. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, Lord. Because here's what he said. He said, you got a couple of factors Go. working for you. You got Belichick with a whole offseason to prep for this. You got Belichick probably not going to cut the freaking grass in Foxborough so nobody can run. You, you'll probably have a tornado at some point because Belichick made a deal with the devil. And then you also <laughs> have, you know, the Super Bowl loser that, that sort of comes in like, what's the mentality there? So I... I like under more in that game. Like I like under 45 more yeah, than I like the points, but I'm telling you, man, this guy banged the Patriots at five and four and a half, and you can still find some fours all over the world. Um, he loves the path. Well, he loses both coordinators too. That's as well. One. You mentioned, okay. They the lose both coordinators, right? The, the loser Super Bowl has only covered three of the last 10 games in, in the opening weekend, but more importantly, guys, the Patriots have a real offensive coordinator now. They're going to run a real offense, a professional offense that they haven't run in over a year now. Like Bill O'Brien, say what you want about it. It's, it's not very nice to say about uh, Matt Patricia. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think I saw a great tweet said like the, the, the Patriots offensive coordinator from last season is, is now like the defensive consultant. Like it tells you <laughs> how, how, how ill-advised that decision was. But we, we can laugh at Bill O'Brien as the Houston general manager, but the Texans made the playoffs four out of six yep. years. He can he ran a good offense at Penn State. He just ran off at Alabama that produced a Heisman winner. They're going to run a good offense. Like they're going to be a good offensive team. Defensively, last season they finished near, near the top of the NFL. I think this is a a great a great great time to get the Patriots here and buy low on the Eagles in Week One. We may, we mentioned a couple of underdogs there: Colts, Patriots. Through another dog out there that. You guys think have a, a, a great chance to win out because we've seen a lot of steam on some sides moving north favorites getting money like like everyone seems to love the falcons this week everyone seems to love <laughs> who, who is wagering on the falcons minus three and a half in week one hosting the panthers i gotta find out who these people are go get, get the book the book of jeff i mean maybe give him maybe give minus three and a half and maybe even make him lay a little, little less juice for you they can give him 105 or something and send him away pick him too that that opened it pick him back yep. in may that's just been steady drip 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 half a point half a point half a point to we're up to a three and a half where man uh i i agree that's getting that that line is leaking that under is leaked down too i'll, I'll pick a dog here I just don't understand. There's some three, some three and a half between the Miami and the chargers. Like if you were to ask me, Hey, pick two teams in the league out of the 32 that are just dead, even with one another, I'd probably pick Miami and, and the chargers. Those teams are extremely comparable. Okay. The games in LA, LA doesn't have much of a home field advantage. So to get the three, three and a half minus minus one twenty, uh, to me, this is a, a coin flip game. I just don't know how you get to that number. Maybe because it's Miami, you know, with the injuries, Ramsey and, and the offensive lineman in Armstead, um, again, this is another one that opened at Pickham. At Pickham, I sort of lean to the Chargers, but I like that opening number at Pickham more than I do the three, three and a half. I think that's too many points. Yeah, I think that's a good call. I'm high on Miami this year, as I already talked about, but I, I like the AFC North dog here at home, Cleveland, plus two and a half. You notice that these odds makers in Vegas specifically open the game two and a half, not three, two and a half. And it's basically hung there the entire summer mm -hmm. with a lot of love for Cincinnati here. I think this is a very square side. It doesn't mean it's going to lose, but I like the home dog there. And I'll tell you what, there is no way in hell I'm laying seven with the Washington football group. 
That is not happening. No, yes, <laughs> exactly right. No they, they, shot. We're, we're gonna, I'm going to get into a little survivor discussion later on the whole game theory. I am welcoming any and all people to go all in with Washington and Survivor because I'm just going to uh, sit there and watch Josh Dobbs or Clayton Toon or whomever just lead lead the Cardinals to an upset win in D, in, in D.C. and see that see the Survivor pools drop by about 50 or 60 percent uh, after that happens. It's funny that that. That uh, we we'll probably hear a little bit more about that Browns Bengals game coming up uh, as well in the uh, in in the show because I, I kind of feel the same way that that, <laughs> that, that Sammy does it. Yeah, Miami, San, Miami, and the, I keep saying San Diego. They're two years removed from San Diego. Maybe it's, maybe it's got friends in San Diego as well. But I don't know. I don't know if I want any part of that game because no result there would surprise me. Wouldn't surprise me if the Chargers blew them out. Wouldn't surprise me if the Dolphins blew them out. Wouldn't. So that, that's a game I want no part of. Jeff, I, I think the Chargers have been in L.A. like seven years now. By have the way. they? Yeah. It's San Diego. It's been, it's been a while. On the <laughs> greatest city as, in America. I'm the same as you. I, I like the Steelers uh, hosting the Niners. I think the Steelers win that game outright. They're, they're getting two points. Um, I, again, I'm high on the Steelers. You have the Niners uh, coming in there with Brock Purdy, obviously coming off an, an elbow injury. An, an offensive line, by the way, besides Trent Williams, kind of shaky, guys. T.J. Watt has a huge advantage there over their right tackle. McGlinchey is gone. Even then, he's struggling in pass protection. I think Pittsburgh is going gonna, is gonna to win outright. It's two points. I get it, but as a small dog at home, I love Pittsburgh. A lot of people do. I, I see. I've seen some some those point spread liabilities, ticket liabilities out there that a lot of people on the Steelers and uh, certainly warranted. All right, guys, what 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 do we miss? Anything you feel strongly about that you want to get out there? Anything that you've played already or considering playing, or just something they might want to give a jog some people's memory out there and give them a cause to to think about, maybe lean them one way or another. Uh, well, I, I what just I have say, missed is that yeah, for the last eight months, I haven't gotten that Sunday morning text. Hey, who's your favorite four team 10 point teaser? <laughs> like, I, I didn't miss that. <laughs> but that will I come so full throttle on. Yeah. 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 My buddies will text me at like, you know, 10 minutes till kickoff. Hey, I need four teams to tease. I'm like, oh my God, this is why the books always win. Um, but back to Survivor, I am doing Survivor. And and Barry, you sort of nailed it here. I know that a lot of people every week are going to bet against Arizona. And I, I think your number is a little bit low, respectfully. I think you're going to see like 60 to 70% of bets on oh, Arizona most weeks so i understand it looks like a free space but that team's going to win a couple games and when it does these pools are going to get whacked so i'm sort of avoiding the arizona fade in my survivor yeah i would just mention for live Which betting is- purposes uh, oh sorry i was just gonna say live betting purposes remember with youtube tv now you might be a couple plays behind so keep that in mind get that situation taken care of call. um that that's definitely something to keep an eye on which team either the Vikings or the Commanders loses everyone their teaser this week. Are you voting oh, for the Vikings or the yeah. Commanders? You know, you, you, you're, and you're laying 140 in a lot of spots with these six-point teasers, too, you know. Teaser pricing is very important. I'll say Minnesota just because <laughs> I think the defense is bad. Although, I, you know what? I, I don't think I don't think it goes down. I think Flores will help their defense. That's a tough place to win. And I man, I think you guys are overrating Arizona a little bit. I know the most likely outcome is they win a game or two. They just stumble <laughs> into a couple wins. I don't know how like whoever plays quarterback, the other guy's gonna have to play because I don't know that they can keep him healthy behind that offensive line. Their defense was bad last year. They lose Watt. It's gonna be worse. I'm sure they're not done trading people, whether it's Marquise Brown or, or Baker. This is an all out assault to lose every single game possible. I don't know that they're close to the these other teams. When the bartender yeah, comes out in Washington, you're all going to panic. Bartender <laughs> is going to hit the command. We all know that. Please tell you, you just let, 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 let the bartender dig. I, I got a guy in college football. It's the same way when, when, when I get the, when I get his picks and, and, and like, if I, if I see I'm on the same, like I'm liking something that he may, I'm like, goodbye. I'm off. Good, no shot. I'm done. Let, let, uh, it's going to good. But yeah, just keep the, keep the bartenders, uh, Tips uh, very very close by for all of us to uh, to profit off of this year. The bar- bartender is a uh, terrific fade. Hopefully none of us will be terrific fades. Hopefully we're gonna have a uh, a great season. And uh, the NFL is here, and it's so hard to win at the NFL. And hopefully we're gonna. Uh, allow you to uh, to make some money and have some success here. Thanks, guys. I think the favorite thing about bet NFL betting for me 
is Survivor. I mean, if you want to consider it betting, I don't even know. But everyone's in Survivor. I am obsessed with Survivor. There are massive Survivor pools all over the country now with, with sportsbook apps, casinos in Vegas that you can enter with the, with a proxy. Like, Survivor is, is where it's at for the end. I love Survivor more than I do individual NFL games. So we're going to try and lay some things out here with Survivor each week just to kind of maybe give you some – advice or what I'm thinking or some thoughts, maybe some some games or teams to consider or maybe even consider staying away. So like the biggest stay away from me this week, I, I like thinking of Survivor as a game theory type, the, type deal. I don't want to be on the pool pick. I don't want to be on the game that half the pool is going to be on because if they lose, half the <laughs> pool is gone and you have picked up a massive edge in, in, in trying to win, win, win Survivor. So I am avoiding the red, the, the commanders this week. Like, like, I get it. It looks like an obvious win with the Cardinals not even trying to win. But you know the Cardinals are going to win a, a couple of games this year. You're going to you're gonna back Sam Howell now, second career start, touchdown favorite. Everyone expects them to win. Like, they're going to be at least a 50% pick in these survivor pools. So if you have four entries in a, in a pool and you want to use one, do that. But I would strongly advise you do not push all in with Washington. There's always a game in NFL week one where you go like, oh, oh, that like that happened. You remember a couple of years ago, the, I think the, the Jacksonville lost at home and you're like, oh, oh, how'd that happen? There's a one game and it feels like this Arizona game, right? Everyone's out in Arizona, rightfully so. They're not a good football team. They're trying to get Caleb Williams. We all know that. But Washington has Sam Howell. Eric Bamey's first time as an OC. Remember, they had to, Taylor Heineke last year had to beg to play Sam Helm in the final game of the season, <laughs> right? So, like, I, I I think you're right on here. Do you look at, at the future schedules of these teams and look, yes. okay, I take Washington here, I can take, yes. I can take this team here, this team here? Yep. Yeah, no, I, I think I, I think if you look at look at Washington, like, when ultimately you're going to, are you going to use them? Like, this is probably the best spot to do it, but I, I just, it, this is more of the, I want to avoid looking at, avoid being on the on the pool pick but one, the one team that I did look at and unless you're looking at saving the bears for yeah. down the road I think week 16 I think they play um they play Arizona I might, I might be wrong on that but yeah there are matrixes out there that lay this out like the risk reward pick this week is Chicago it's basically a toss-up game at home against the Packers I, I already mentioned that I like the Bears yeah. minus the minus the point basically to win the game like not a lot of people are going to be on Chicago this week it's an opportunity to burn what I think is going to be a mediocre team at best against another mediocre team at best yeah maybe there's a higher chance that you lose here but at the same time you survive with the Bears you've crossed a bad team off your yeah. off the grid saved some good teams and you move on so I, I don't know what you feel about back in Justin Fields or maybe fading yeah. Jordan Love in the Packers? I'd rather wait on that game. It's a one point spread as we talked about earlier, and Jordan Love might be good. I don't, I, I don't, I don't really know yet. And, and there's a, a, I could see them winning that game more. Than I could see some of the other teams that we have here. And so, who's your favorite play of the week? Then? The top choice, the team, the team that I ultimately settled on is Seattle. Like there aren't a ton of clear chances if you look at some of these matrices that are out there in terms of win, win probability and percentages to take Seattle. This is the most obvious one. They do have Carolina at home. They do have Arizona at home. But this is a play against the Rams. And I think one of the things about Survivor is a lot of times you're just looking for teams to play against more than you are backing a team. I don't know what Geno Smith is going to do this year. I don't know how improved the, the, the Seattle defense is going to be. I don't know if Jackson Smith and Jimmy ultimately is going to play and how big of a year he will have. But I do know that the Rams roster outside of Cooper Cup, Matthew Stafford, and Aaron Donald is terrible. And Cooper Cup is not playing. <laughs> not playing. So like, <laughs> now, now you're looking at the Rams yeah. going on the road with a bad defense with like zero experience there, uh, an offensive line that's terrible. And do I want to lay five with Seattle? No, because I think there's a backdoor potential there. But I feel pretty good that Seattle will win this game. Over the years, we have texted about Survivor. Yes. You, we text a lot about Survivor. I live in a state, unfortunately, that doesn't have legal sports wagering at the moment. We're getting it move. fairly soon. I, I probably should, but we're getting it soon. I do like where I live. But we are in New York City right now. New York City, and the state of New York, allows for you to wager yes, on sports. Do. And so I joined a Survivor pool on one of the on one of the, uh, the 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 legal sports wagering apps. And for the first time ever, I get to enter this because yes. I, I did not do a proxy in Vegas. I know you can do that. 
I think Seattle is the is the is the, is the optimal choice this week as well. I, I would probably go with you most weeks. So I'm going to make for the first time ever. I get to make my own wager for a survivor pool and put Seattle in there. Beautiful in New York. Um, I did, dude. We I we talked about this. Like I was like I realized yesterday. Oh, I, I'm in a state where I could do this. I made so many wagers <laughs> the last 24 hours that I have to come back next week as usual, and we'll have to look at all of them to see how we did in week one, uh, the first time doing being able to use uh, any of these apps. So I'm with you on Seattle. I got you right here. We're good to go. go 12th man. 12th man. Let's do it. All right, Bear. Let's uh, recap one more time here the wagers you put in before we get to our best bet here. You have the Bears. Hosting the Packers, the Bears at minus one. There, that line's going to probably move a tiny bit before kickoff. I would imagine. Uh, you have the Browns. Uh, excuse me, the Bengals at the Browns. The Browns are getting two and a half points. That's plus two and a half for the Browns. There, you have the Jaguars at the Colts. The Colts plus five. Anthony Richardson's first start. And your New York Jets getting two and a half points against the Buffalo Bills on Monday Night Football. Aaron Rodgers' first opportunity in the regular game for the Jets. Uh, Bear, what is your best bet of the week? Brown, Brown's getting two and a half at home against the Bengals. I'll, 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 I'll take them on the money line as well. I outlined all the reasons, but I think I think the Browns are poised for a uh, for a big season, and I'm not sure uh, we'll see peak Joe Burrow right out of the gate. Remember last year. Bengals did lose that opening week game against Pittsburgh yeah. in a game that it probably should have won. But, but at the same time, I, I think I think Cleveland's the right side here. My best bet is a game we talked about in the gambling group chat. I like Pittsburgh here, plus two and a half hosting the 49ers. And one opportunity you get in the first week of the NFL season is to get these lines much earlier. So if you do like something, you can get a, a better line. So it, it's a good spot to be in if you like an underdog especially. But, guys, Pittsburgh's going to be good this year, man. I, I really believe it. Kenny Pickett's going to take the next step up. The offensive line is much improved. George Pickens, I, I love his, his capability this season to be one of the best wide receivers in the NFL and defensively, they get Watt back, man. They're so much better with a with with him, and they're good anyways on defense. The Niners, Brock Purdy coming off that injury, going on the road to Pittsburgh. I have a real struggle with their offense line outside of Trent Williams against Pittsburgh's defensive line here. Um, Christian McCaffrey, by the way, Bear, they're talking about like a pitch count with him the, this year as well. Like I just don't like the vibe sort of on the road for the Niners in this game. It, well. I'll give you my opinion on that game. Happy wife, happy life is a motto to live by. My <laughs> wife is from Pittsburgh. She is a massive Steelers fan. I can remember the Steelers Cardinals Super Bowl oh. where we, we had a big Super Bowl party and she actually went up to our room and like locked herself in the room by herself and watched the end of that game because she was immensely stressed and concerned that they were, they were going to lose that game to the Cardinals. And I was too. Here I am. I'm sitting, I'm sitting there as a Jets fan. Like, the Cardinals are going to win a Super Bowl. What the <laughs> hell have I done in life to deserve the Jets never winning anything and the, one of the worst organizations ever, the Arizona Cardinals, uh, going to win a Super Bowl? So uh, I hope your pick is right there because that will mean it is a, uh, a happy, good weekend in the Felica household. Um, I, I love we're on it together. But, um, hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll uh, have good success with the best bets. So that's it. Week one, Bear Bets NFL podcast, uh, one and done here for the National Football League. Hopefully we'll have a great week, and we'll look forward to uh, joining you again for week two. Good luck, everybody. And remember, the less you bet, the more you lose when you win. <laughs>